Welcome to episode 73, 2020 Vision for Referrals. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. Thanks for joining me this week. This week, I want to talk to you about a subject that's important always, but more important than ever coming out of COVID in 2020, and it's how to gain referrals, give referrals, take referrals, who to look for, what to look for, how they go, how you can get your business bigger right away with trusted business from other referrals, and how you can get other people happy with your referral business that you're sending them. It's more important now than ever when we come out of COVID because we have a lot of different people facing a lot of different things. There's a lot of different reasons. One of the main reasons it's going on is a lot of people are getting blown over or stood up or not seeing any attention at all. They're calling contractors. They're not getting any help. They're calling attorneys, real estate agents, all these different people throughout our entire system and organizations. Everything that we do to sell houses, painters, roofers, all these people, tons and tons of my clients are coming back to me saying, Sean, I cannot get a hold of anyone. It's amazing to think in this world where we say everything is down right now and people are trying to get back to work that the people that are back to work aren't answering phone calls now mind you remember as a business owner just because you answer a call doesn't mean you need to reply tomorrow you can at least answer the call and line it up and say i'm three weeks out and just give the person the decency of a call back and to make sure that they understand you've taken care of them that's why it's more important than ever to make sure that you have good resources to give your clients to make sure that they find the help that they need in order to get ready for the process help the process, and finish the process. Referrals are one of those things that can end up a standoff. Lots of people say, okay, you give me a referral, I'll give you a referral. Well, with that type of attitude, how are you ever going to get the chain started? Who's going to be the first one that shows what they have so that the other person wants in? Who's going to be the first person that says, hey, I'm willing to give these clients because I know if I put positive behavior and I put positive moods in the air, people are going to react to that. One of the things about all humans is that we like to reciprocate. We don't like to not give back when someone gives to us. It's like when someone gives us a gift and we weren't expecting it, we almost feel bad in the overall experience thinking, geez, I wish I got them a gift as well. When you walk into somebody's house for a dinner party and everyone else brought a tray of food and you didn't, we get that negative feeling that we didn't mean to have. That's why when you start giving referrals, you'll end up finding out that you'll end up taking a lot more referrals. So referrals are definitely a give and take business. They're not just something where suddenly people are going to drop them all in your lap. And when they do drop them in your lap, you want to make sure that you reciprocate as well. I know a lot of people that are one way directional when it comes to referrals. We work in the real estate industry, so there's lots of different referrals being given. But I can tell you mortgage brokers are the worst by far. Most mortgage brokers tell you they never meet anybody, yet we all teach the first step to real estate is getting a pre-approval, and we all know that tons of people reach out to them before reaching out to us. So what do they do? They tell all their referral partners they don't give referrals, they beg for referrals all day long, and then they take their favorite person and they give them every single one of their referrals. Now, talking specifically to you mortgage brokers, my advice to you would be to use a round robin method and to give them to your best. Of course, don't give them to everybody, but definitely do not focus on giving them to one person. As much as that one person may seem worth it to you, it may be the biggest hold back to your business. Because I can tell you, I've worked with a lot of different mortgage brokers, and yes, some of them do give me referrals, but other ones do not, and they beg me every single day all day long through emails and everything and it's like if you just sent me a referral don't you think that that would get the process started a lot of them don't understand that other places that come in in our industry that are pretty bad about this would be attorneys and i understand attorneys have some conflict of interest issues as well as they're just trying to avoid certain subjects attorneys should take more of the reins and get good people together one of the great parts of referrals is you can get a trusted team together you can get people that know what they're doing get them all together, and you can really crush deals, and you can make everybody happy, especially on the buyer side on real estate. Of course, if we have a buyer agency agreement form and we have a certain set pay, we're going to get paid. But otherwise, the great part about referring most real estate agents is we pretty much all charge the same thing. And when it's on the other side, the buy side, the referral is going to get paid only based on what the MLS payment is, which is already preset. So there is no worry about them charging more where when we're referring out as real estate agents, we always fear. We fear everything because mortgage brokers tell us they got the lowest rate in their little hoodwink game while they have the highest closing costs and prepaids. Not prepaids, but actual payments need to be made in order to make that closing happen within the closing costs. The other thing is they tend to go over to the attorneys. All the attorneys charge different rates. Every single attorney has a different 
idea of how long it takes to draft a PNS and what a satisfactory PNS looks like. So for us real estate agents, it's a lot harder to refer than it is for them to refer to us. Because again, as long as you know that the person that you're referring to is working hard, there's hardly anyone in the industry charging anything different. Of course, there's low ballers and there's high ballers when it comes to the listing side of things. But when it comes to the buyers, most all of us are charging whatever the MLS compensation says. Hardly any people working in the real estate industry are signing a buyer agency agreement form and charging their buyers a half a percent or a percent more to fill what they consider a less than desirable commission rate. And that's gone on for a long time. We do have some lawsuits coming up that may change that, some antitrust agreement lawsuits and things like that that are going on nationally against things like some of the larger companies from a group of people that are suing them over the fact that they don't expose out what we get paid to the public side. So don't be surprised also if in the future you see coming up that the amount for a buyer agent compensation is listed on things like Zillow, Redfin, and other places. All along, we've always had that hidden, but I think most all the hidden information from the public will no longer be seen as legal and will all go to the public side. So now let's take a minute to talk about the give and take relationship and how it works out. Everyone knows when someone gives you something, you're able to take something. It's just how it goes. Again, back to that law of reciprocation, but who could we create a give and take relationship for? Who could we immediately find within our network that needs more that we could help out? And then how would they end up helping us out? So let's talk about some of the different people that work hand in hand with real estate agents. First off, we have roofers, we have landscapers, we have painters, we have plumbers, we have electricians, we have solar power, we have irrigation specialists, we have paving specialists, we have tree removal companies. If you don't have a good one of every single one of those, or even a good two or three of every single one of those, you're failing at being a salesperson, you're failing at putting together your network. Next, let's talk about attorneys. Divorce attorneys, estate attorneys, both of those individuals currently, especially in 2020, they're going to have a lot of referrals. In 2020, remember, we had COVIDian lockdown. If we have lockdown, do you think divorce is not going to happen more often? Of course, if you didn't like your spouse before, being locked in a building with them for the past couple months has certainly shored up the deal and divorces are going to be at an all-time high. I can promise you if you don't have a divorce attorney that you're working with, you might be messing up. And realize as a real estate agent, there is no problem with offering a referral fee to attorneys. They do have their brokerage license automatically in the state of Massachusetts. So setting up a referral network with these people, they actually can get paid for the referral source. We personally have a web page right on our website that talks all about attorneys and attorney referrals if you want to go check that out. But remember, divorce attorneys, they're going to be great clients because what kind of clients do they come up with? They come up with someone who is getting divorced. So typically you're taking one household, selling it, and then at minimum you're buying one, if not two other houses. Sometimes a buyer or seller will like you more than another buyer or seller will like you as far as maybe the husband or maybe the wife or maybe the husband or maybe the wife again doesn't like you so they use someone else to buy but most often you at least sell the house and sometimes you're lucky enough to get one or two buyers out of that deal and then if you did a good job you tend to get a lot of referrals to friends and family let's not forget that the most important referrals are client-based referrals i am focusing on other referrals today but never forget the most important ones are the referral of good word of good work another one is the estate attorney estate attorneys right now with covid going on is huge the other thing that's going on with it now Everyone's kind of on pause when it comes to taking over family houses, getting out there, cleaning them up. So there's a ton of estates coming on, not just from COVID death, but from normal attrition that happens within the country. So we have a major backlog of those coming up. These are things that are going to become more and more prevalent as the next few months go on. Now, the sets of attorneys we have would be bankruptcy attorneys and other interest and accounting attorneys where they overall foresee people's money because we have a lot of people that are going to have to make downsize and shift over moves. We have people that are out of work. So having the referral basis from somebody that is a business attorney, a bankruptcy attorney, some of these other attorneys that are in tax law and things, these people are going to have great referrals that need to buy, sell, or sell, buy, or all these different situations. We have businesses making more money than ever in certain sectors. So knowing business attorneys, we have referrals for businesses that are looking to grow. The other one we have is the bankruptcy, which is people just looking to get rid of what they have. Most of the time when we deal with these different things, when someone sells something that's too expensive, yes, sometimes they do go to a rental, but most often they end up purchasing something else somewhere else. So it's important to make sure 
that you're involved with these groups and that you're having your voice heard, how do you get your voice heard? Remember, I am all about content driven. I'm all about giving value. So if you're not already reaching out to these attorneys, if you're not already offering them some sort of value, if you're not keeping them up to date on where you're at, you might be missing out on a huge amount of overall volume. Now let's talk about some out of the box ones. So lots of people don't think about the fact that when people have babies, they end up buying houses. So where can we get some referrals? Maybe someone that works at a baby store. Maybe someone who is a midwife. Maybe someone who helps childbirthing that's a doctor. Maybe a nurse from that room that does the birthing. These people have people in their hands all the time having children who then are going to ask them all sorts of different questions. And I know you don't think people that go to babies to go or any of these other companies are out there talking about it, but the reality is they are. One of the things that's most interesting about referrals is until you open your ears and start hearing all the buzz out there, you don't even realize people are begging you for referrals all day long. When someone says to you, I'm about to move, some people say congratulations and others say, do you have an agent yet? It's a matter of whether you see everything in the world as an opportunity or you see it as a closed and sealed deal and you're just watching a movie play by. Learn to hit pause on the movie. Learn to inject yourself into the situation. Learn to listen for things, not just for yourself. Now, I gave you an example there about moving and selling the house, but what if somebody says to you, I'm thinking about painting one of my arms. Okay, do you have a good painter? Oh, no, I don't. Why do you ask? Oh, well, I work with this referral group. And our painter is a great painter. He'd love to come out and talk with you. Be the source of knowledge and you will end up receiving lots and lots of referrals. So I do suggest getting involved in referral groups. Referral groups can consist of anything from business networking, BNI, all the way over to chamber of commerces, or just as simple as Facebook group that a lot of you get together and you're all great businesses and great friends and you talk referrals in that group. Getting into these groups, getting that set up, getting that network set up is a surefire way to make sure that not only you're getting one referral, but you're starting to get a steady flow. There's lots of dangers to what's going on. You got to make sure that the people that are involved are good. You got to make sure that their prices are fair. I'm not saying their prices are low. I'm not saying their prices are high. I'm saying their prices are fair. If they do high quality work, luxury work, they can charge luxury prices. But if they're charging luxury prices for crappy work, you can't be involved with them. The danger of giving out a referral is that the person immediately believes that they should call you if the referral doesn't work out to let you know what's going on. So make sure when you are doing referrals, you're not just doing it for the cash value. You're not just doing it for the referral value. You're not doing it to get cool, free stuff from some company, but you're doing it because you wholeheartedly believe that that's the right source for them and that that person is going to treat them great and that it's going to end up growing and continue to grow your business because they're going to say, you know, last time I didn't know what I was doing, I called Sean up. He set me up with these people and it worked out great. So one way to avoid these people when it comes to the referral things is not just to publicly advertise I'm looking for referral partners, but to pick and choose, to be selective, to find the people that you wish to emulate, that you would like to work with, that maybe you have even hired to do work for yourself and that you appreciated how they did. And then slowly but surely trickle on the business to them. Don't just give them 100 referrals right away. Not that you have 100, but just don't give them a huge amount of referrals right away. Test them. See how it goes. And then also speak back with your referral partners as far as the people that you're referring out. Ask them, how responsive was Frank the other day? Did he call you back? How did that go? How was the work? Where was it at? And make sure when things do happen, you don't hide. If things do happen, you make it known. I'm not Frank, but I will reach out to Frank. It's not usually like Frank to do this. Let's see what's going on with him. And be that mitigator. Be that person. Don't go, oh, I can't believe he'd do that to you. One of the things they always teach is don't assume reasonableness. Don't assume you know the situation. Talk to both parties. Find out. Be the mitigator. Get things back together. And if need be, be willing to pull the plug on one referral and to immediately drop another referral source in there so that they can handle the situation. There's lots and lots of ways to make money doing referrals in real estate. Today we talked about the inbound outbound referrals Outside of real estate agents, we didn't even touch on the basis that all real estate agents throughout the entire country can refer to other agents and pick up whatever their referral percentage is, whether it be a quarter of the deal, 35%. That's up to each individual of what they charge. But I can tell you it's real money and it's available out there. And the more you do it, if you get that outbound flow, you're going to create that inbound flow. I hope this helps you find more referrals in your business and helps you grow your book of business. 
Thanks for listening this week. If you don't already, please subscribe to the podcast and tell all your friends and family about it. We really appreciate you all listening every week. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to PM me, DM me, whatever works best for you. And I look forward to talking to you next week. Have a great day.